All right, so in this one, we are gonna create our actual Django project and do some changes to it. Again, this is kind of repetitive to what we've done before, but I wanna make sure those newer users are able to do this. Now, inside of my virtual environment, I already have it activated. I do pip freeze and I see that I have Django installed. So on Mac and Linux, you can just do django.admin.py start project. And I'm gonna call this cur, that is K-I-R-R, -R, because we're doing a URL uh, shortening service and eventually it's gonna exist on cur.co. And so we'll call it cur, I'll press enter. And of course it creates that Django project for us. If you're on Windows, there's something that I believe you would have to do Python and dot slash scripts slash Django dash admin dot pi start project cur. I believe that is the call for it for you Windows users on how you can do that. In some cases, this one does actually work on the Windows user. So um, if you are a Windows user and you're watching this, please post in the comments below exactly what that call is so we know and other people know for the future. Okay, so now that we've got that inside of here, we're gonna go to Cur, and I'm just gonna rename this here to SRC. And this is kind of a standard convention for naming your project. You're usually gonna have your project inside of a source folder or a source like directory and the reason for that is because it's kind of the standard default as to where most people put their projects in all sorts of coding they put it in something called source that's likely what it's going to be it might be s um u excuse me s o u r c e or it might be in something called dis like distribution or uh, distributed code in this case we're calling it src okay cool so now that we've got that we're going to go ahead and change into our source folder on our virtual environment. And then we're just gonna do Python manage.py make migrations. I'll explain this in a second. It says no changes detected, but we did notice that this db.sqlite3 file came through. Now if I do Python manage.py migrate, I go ahead and migrate and I see that there's a bunch of things that were created. Um, so these things that were created are basically database entries. So we just pretty much started our database, which is really cool. Notice it has some built-in things such as auth, so like a user authentication. Um, it also has something called an admin, which is something we'll go through. But that's essentially it. We have our Django project actually working now. Um, there are some things in here that are just slightly different from other versions, or at least going forward they will be. Like if we look at our settings file, this looks different than the settings file in previous versions, but that's where sticking with the version in the video makes such a big difference. And where did that database exactly come from? It's this right here. So if db.sqlite3 does not exist, it will create one. Or in fact, if I change the database name, it will create a new one. So if I run migrate again, notice it created a new one. Um, so that's really useful when it comes to testing out new data and if we run into database issues. Now the migrations, when I said make migrations, that is something that's very useful for when there's changes to how, well, how our application kind of maps to this database. We'll get into that when it's important, but for now this make migrations does a lot of really cool stuff for us that we'll cover in the future. So we've created this project and I'm gonna change it back to db.sqlite3 and then I'm gonna delete the other SQLite3 file. So back into settings, um, I just wanna cover a few things here as far as what's important. Number one, SQLite3 is not very secure. I can open up SQLite3 easily without needing a username and password. So that means if you have access to my SQLite3 database, you can totally get all the things that you want from my database. Where if you're using something more like um, MySQL or Postgres, QL, you, those things are definitely more secure. There's other ones that are also very secure, but it's just something to note right off the bat. Now, first of all, what is going on here is we're setting a folder. So the base folder, as in where manage.py lives, um, that is where th that base directory is referring to. So whatever folder is that, which is our main project folder, which is SRC, which we call it, that's where that is going. We've got our secret key in here. This, you wanna make it different in production. We'll get to production later. 
debug. This is really good for local testing. So seeing errors and template error pages, which we'll see a lot. And then allowed host, this is production related. We'll come back to that. Installed apps, we will definitely talk about this more. Um, I'm gonna leave it out for now. Middleware is this concept that we'll also talk about, but it's in between requests. So like when you go to a website and you say, hey website, what's up? And that website sends you back some information. There's, there's stuff that goes on in between that request. So when I say, when I click on google.com, there's all these things that happen between that click and then the google.com actually rendering. That's what middleware does. Root URL configuration or root conf, URL conf, that is where we do our URL mapping, which we will absolutely discuss. Templates, um, Django has a very powerful templating engine that allows us to do all sorts of things with our code and data. This we will come back to as well. Um, our WSGI application, this is just mainly server related. So our, our Django application can actually run. We've already talked about the database. Um, we have auth password validations, so our validators. These are making sure our passwords are strong. Um, this is something that's newer to Django, but it is something that's very useful. That is like when a user creates a password, we wanna make sure that it hits a minimum length. There is definitely uh, details on that right here. So if you wanna know more about that, check that out. Internationalization, it's pretty much what it sounds like. So if you have a different language code or a time zone, you can set all those things there. Static files, we will definitely come back to this um, in the future. So that's pretty much it as far as the settings are concerned and as well as getting our Django project started. All right, so if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.